Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Diane here, Diane Anton. This is my studio and today I'm going to paint some leaves. I'm going to show you different ways of painting leaves um, which I use in my paintings and which we can put together to make quite a nice painting if we want to or else we can just, you know, do some odd bits and pieces here. Uh, on small pieces of paper. This is maiden paper, which I tend to use mostly. And uh, I'm just going to take this piece off. This is a block of paper, which means that it's glued all the way around, except for a small gap here. And when you have done your painting, you just slide a knife into that gap and run the knife round the outside edge like that. And it comes off very neatly and perfectly flat. There's no uh, bending there, whereas if you had painted onto a piece of paper even as small as that, without it being in a block, you would find there might be a slight curve. So this is really useful um, to have them in blocks. And then down to my last piece there. Um, this is some little um, doodles I just did using some other paint. I'm going to switch now from my practice paint to my proper paint. And this is um, this is Michael Harding paint, which is beautiful. You don't have to go as rash as that um, and lash out on something expensive like this. But, you know, um, anything like Winsor Newton or Daniel Smith or any kind of paint will do for this exercise, because that's what it is, really. It's going to be a kind of painting exercise. I've got a bigger pad here. This is also a block. This is a piece which I had made a mess on, and so I've cut that out, and that can go... No, actually, I'll put that here to one side, and I can use that to practice my colours on if I need to try a colour out before I start, which I should. Um, yeah, so, okay, the colours that I'm going to be using... This is the um, Michael Harding Botanical set, and we've got colours here like green, gold, and... Um, uh, what have we got here? We've got aqua green and we've got, um, I can't remember what that one's called. Let me show you the tubes. They're lovely paints actually. Um, so yeah, hooker's green we've got here. Hooker's green, aqua green, sap green, bright green lake. This is bright green lake and lots of different greens anyway. So you can mix and match and get something you like very easily. We've also got some reds and yellows and so on and so forth. Um, it doesn't matter what paint you use, any paint will do. This is hot pressed Meaden paper, as I said. I'm going to open that up and put that there and then I'm going to paint some leaves. And if I don't talk very much today, um, you'll have to forgive me. I don't know. I'm not sure if I feel like talking all that much today, but um, we'll see, won't we? Because we never know how things can turn out. I'm using um, a craft mo brush. I've got several of them here. Um, if you've got our set, um, you'll find some of these in it, <laughs> oddly enough. And um, there are only a few sets left now. So if you want to buy a set, do pop over to me um, to craft mo and grab one while they're still there. Um, and also, just to mention, next year or at the end of this year, we're going to be doing a subscription box which will have brushes in it too, if you sign up to it. So, um, that's just kind of basically a sneak peek. Um, brush, uh, what am I saying? Leaves, leaves, right, leaves. Leaves are important in painting, um, but more than that, they're nice to do. And when you do leaves, I, I tend to tend to do them freehand. OK, which is what I mean by that is I will load my brush with a bit of paint, green, mix a few of these greens together on the brush, not too thoroughly, so you're likely to get um, a, ver a variety of colours. And then, um, you know, hold the brush loosely and um, properly and then you can either draw the leaves to start with or else what I often do, and you've seen me do frequently, is just draw in a stem. It doesn't matter if it's not even along the length of it, because what you're then going to do is you're going to touch the paper with the point of your brush, press down lightly and lift up, and then drop a little bit more paint in there and let that 
blend. You can encourage it if you want, or you can just let it do its own thing. Quite often on cold, on hot press paper, quite often you'll find um, that, and you can do it this way too, start from there or you can start from there. So you can either go this way and then join it up, or you can go this way and let it go and you get slightly different effects. Okay. And then you can do like that, where what I've done is put the point down and then twist it slightly to one side. Press down hard and twist, and then you get a curved leaf. Did you see that? So you press down and twist, and you get a bend in your leaf like that, which is quite nice. And as you go up the plant, change your colour, just because that's what happens in real life. Change the size and change the angle. And then you can go back if you want with a dark, a bit more darker green and just drop some blobs of green into the still wet stem and that will move out into those leaves. Resist the temptation to fiddle. Just leave it like that and move on to the next one. So we'll draw a nice stem like this. And then maybe we'll start at the top here and work down. And another way to do leaves is to press, just press as if you were stamping something, just gently press down like that. You're not moving the brush at all, just pressing down a little bit and you get tiny leaves and they'll all be different. Change the colour when you run out of paint, go to a different colour. And then once you've got down to the bottom, you can again pick up some darker colour. I'm going to go for some Payne's grey, green. Uh, and one thing I have to be careful of always is not to put my hand on my painting. I do have a very bad habit of doing that. So that's another one, a light, small one. So we'll do one similar here, but I'm gonna do these ones a little bit darker and a little bit bigger. And the way of doing that, you can press down once and then press down again next to it. So you get a bigger leaf, okay? but don't do the outline and then fill it in. That's not, uh, that's not so artistic. <laughs> so press down, lift up, press down and join it on. Turn that round so I can do it from this side and I'm going to hold the brush further up so that I don't touch my wet work. In a minute, I will probably have to let it dry. If you use um, cold pressed paper rather than hot like this is, you'll get a slightly different effect. I have found over the last couple of years that I really like using hot pressed paper for anything vaguely botanical. I just prefer the look that you get. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that you should feel the same way. Um, but if you haven't tried hot press, I would recommend that you do because it is good. Um, okay, so then here, let's see, what should we do here? Uh, I want to put a third one in here. So I think let's, let's make it go this way. Best not to hesitate too long. And let's, let's do something, uh, let's do, what should we do? A little bit bigger still, perhaps. And then after these are dry, you can come back with the tip of your brush and draw in the veins the leaves once it's completely dry. 
just go on top and you'll get a good effect. If you want to do something that's going to calm you down, this is probably the best thing I can think of. I was feeling a bit eh this morning. Don't know why, but I was. And this will help, I know it will. So let's do another one here. Let's do a line down there like that. And then I'm going to, first of all, put in some side branches. I love the way that when you go like this, the paint drops into the center. You come down from, from there, it will be the same. You see that? Okay, so that's our supporting stem. I'm just going to move the paint up a little bit so that you can see properly. And then on each one of these little spiky bits, I'm going to do some small leaves. Like this. Just stencil, not stenciling, printing with the brush like that. Because they're small, so I, I find it easier to do it like that. But you could, you could do them, you know, using drawing strokes like that too. And as as they get bigger, as you go down the stem, you're going to start to do that. Change the color. Just keep changing the colour, it's very important. If you want an interesting, if you're going to do a painting that's all green, you want to make sure that you're using lots of different greens, don't you? There we are, and then just pick up a tiny bit of very dark green and do the usual. Dropping in, it just gives more interest. And you can go in to the center veins of these ones and add their little doobries. If you use one of these very finely pointed brushes, it doesn't have to be a tiny brush. There's no need for a tiny brush because tiny brushes don't hold much paint. But if you use this size and if you use a good quality brush with a, with a point like this one has, you can do very fine work. You can do very fine work with quite a big brush. Okie dokie. So let's, I think we need something with bigger leaves here. Maybe we'll just do a couple of big, biggish ones, maybe. Um, always starting with the stem. And then maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'll do a fairly big leaf like this.
You can really, you know, do your own thing here, show your own personality, do as much or as little to your leaves as you want. You can play with them, come in with them and come into them and give them more shadows and things like that, adding like this just by dropping paint in and letting it move. Got a hair on my brush, how unusual. Okay, so that's that one. And now let's see what else can we do that's a little bit different. Um, let's, I don't know. Uh, there are so many, aren't there? Let's, let's go for a little bit of yellow. Perhaps we'll do some yellow. And perhaps we can put in some, some basic yellow. like this. And then perhaps if we pick up some really dark green and try doing a line down the center. We would have to let that run, but we can probably also encourage it a bit like this. Not sure if that's going to work. I haven't tried this before. I'm not going to panic. I think that's probably going to be okay. Let that do its thing and see what happens. It's different, isn't it? And, uh, well, I think probably we need here, one with nice long leaves. I'm using quite a bit of that colour, but let's mix some of the phthalo green with the green gold. And let's try doing some really long, thin ones. You'll see that as I'm painting, I tend to turn the brush a little bit. And press down and lift up, that's the key. And twist to get the shape like that. Okay. And different colors will give you some interest in your in your um, arrangement there. So we'll put another one up here. And let's do lots of little ones like that. And then maybe we'll just go a little bit bigger. I guarantee if you give this a try, especially on the hot press paper, you will enjoy this. So don't uh, deny yourself the pleasure. I guarantee if you're feeling down, 
that there is a good chance that if you do this, you'll feel a little bit better. I'm going to put one leaf here. I'm going to build it up with multiple strokes. Showing you that you don't have to um, draw the outline. And build it, build a build a leaf like build a bear. I'm going to drop a little bit more dark in here. And when that's dry, we can put in, or when it's nearly dry, we can put in some um, veins. So what we have now, we have a design with some leaves and uh, I'm going to let that dry. I put in a few veins and then come back and have a look and see what we've got. For the veins, you can take a sharp pointed stick and if it's not yet dry, you can draw into your paint and give yourself some lines which will either come out lighter or darker. Uh, depending on when you did it. If the paint is already dry, that won't work. So I don't think mostly it's going to work here. It might work a little bit on this one because it's a bit dry. Uh, I mean, it's a bit wet and it might work on that one like that. Um, if you're going to do that technique, you probably want to do it a little bit earlier on in the process. But some of those will work. You can see it doesn't have to be very, very dark, does it? Um, so I could go up to the <clears throat> top here where this one is dry and I could just put in some very faint centre veins just using the tip of my brush. And you don't have to do that because you still get an effect which is pleasant even without the veins, you don't have to do this. But I just wanted to show you that you don't even have to change the brush. You can do it with the same brush if it's a good brush. Um, the Craft Mill ones that, that I do have are good, um, but also the other one I quite like is Princeton. Uh, Aqua Elite is the one I prefer. So. I'm not going to do all of these just to show you how easy that is to just put a vein in. And on this one, we'll just go over the ones that we scratched in. And then we've got some veins in him too, and he looks a bit more leaf-like. So there we are, a page of leaves. And these can be incorporated into many different paintings, lots of designs, and in fact, to be quite honest, on their own, they make quite a nice picture too. So not difficult, give it a try. I, I was using a size six, I think that is, round brush, piece of hot press paper, and some green paint. So I hope you enjoy that, and uh, I'll let you go now. Don't forget to visit our website, uh, dianeanton.com, where you can download lots and lots of sketches for free as well as finding lots of other things, join our newsletter, which comes out every Sunday and is full of interesting things. And don't forget, we have redone our Patreon. And if you would like to join and become a member, you now get, as well as the perks that we had on offer before, you also will be uh, receiving a long, exclusive, in-depth, detailed video uh, twice, no, once a month, um, on around about the 12th, the middle of the month, be on the Friday in the middle of the month. I'll, and we will be sending you a calendar as well, uh, so you'll know what to expect and when. And also the other thing that's new on Patreon is the um, we're going to be doing a live premiere with um, live questions and ans answers, Q&A, um, at the end of the month. So there'll be two completely new things um, in Patreon. And for those of you who want to go into things in more depth, 
um, that's where you will find the longer video content, much, much longer, more depth, more detail, more uh, demanding, even probably more landscapes and, um, and things like that. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and comment anyway and say what you think about this. I haven't done anything like this before, I don't think, so it'd be interesting to know what you think. And uh, I'm going to go, I've got a sore throat, what's the matter with me? Tamsin said she had one yesterday. I think we've been talking too much, or maybe it's because we're painting the kitchen. That could be it, couldn't it, the paint? Right, I'm gonna say bye-bye for now, and it's time for lunch. I'll see you soon. Bye everybody, bye-bye.